Hello everyone! Lately I got a lot of questions regarding different component types. That's why I decided to make a video series of different basing components. Today I'm going to take a closer look at capacitors and their application in synthesizers. Let's get started. So let's get started with ceramic capacitors. So they look something like this usually. Um, so depending on uh, on the quality, on the capacitance, they differ a bit here in, in size and, and pitch here of, of the legs, um, but this all looks uh, very similar. So, if for example, on, on this one here, there's a 104 noted. Um, so, let's talk a bit ab about the identifiers. Um, so, um, this is uh, the base here basically, and this is the exponent. So this is 10 uh, picofarads times 10, and the exponent is 4. So this would be, and this would be equivalent. Uh, this is in picofarad, and this would be 100 nanofarads here. Um, so this also works here for, for smaller sizes, so here on this one is a, is a 2 to 1. So the exponent here is, is the 1, so this would be 22 picofarads times 10 exponent 1. Um, so this would be 220 picofarads here, for example. Um, on this one here you also have um, uh, like a voltage, um, so this is 100 volts, I think, here. Um, so this really depends uh, on the package. Um, so they also, if you only have like one or two digits, like like five or, or ten or something, so this uh, would be uh, like five picofarads, um, or this would be ten picofarads. Um, so this is uh, really straightforward. Uh, I would say, so let's talk a bit up about the applications. Um, so usually um, this is used um, um, at either for filtering uh, or as a bypass um, capacitor. This would be an example here from, from the last time. Um, so you see here this is uh, the power for, for one of the op amps uh, here, for a quad op amp in this case here, and um, there's a 100, 100 nanofarad um, capacitor. Um, and this is basically to, um, to have, uh, so the, this uh, capacitor is close by um, to, this, to this integrated circuit, in this case to this op amp here, to um, basically provide um, um, some power in case there's some, some, some peak um, in uh, needed in the application. Um, so this is basically idea, the idea um, and to filter out noise or ripple uh, in, in the power supply. So a classic application um, would be uh, a simple passive uh, high pass or low pass filter. So this uh, would look something like this. Um, so you, here you have a capacitor and then there's a, a resistor to ground basically and uh, so this would be a simple high uh, pass filter so depending on the values you can uh, basically calculate its uh, cutoff frequency and, um, and the other way around so this is uh, a basic uh, low pass filter um, so, yeah. and depending on the values so this is uh, changing basically uh, the filter properties. So next would be uh, electrolytic capacitors. Um, so this here would be some examples. So depending on the capacitance, um, they come in different sizes. Um, this here is a, so a um, uh, 100 uh, microfarad uh, capacitor. And here yeah, it's for up to 35 volts. Um, and they come also much bigger. So this is a... Uh, uh, 3,300 microfarad, also 35 volts. Um, so they come in different sizes, different shapes, so they can, can get really big. Um, uh, what is important here, um, so compared to the ceramic capacitors, so they usually have a much bigger cap a capacitance and um, 
uh, also they are polarized. So the ceramic capacitors uh, are non-polarized, uh, so that make, it doesn't matter which way around you put them in. But here in the electrolytic capacitors, this is different. So here's this big marking here, so this is the negative pole. Um, you can also see this uh, on, on my PCBs, um, for example, here. So um, this is marked here clearly. Um, this is is the negative, the negative side. Um, yeah, so usually, um, so this is clearly marked here in, in microfarad uh, on them. Um, I use mostly 35 volts or more. So this is, um, especially for UREC format, this is really useful um, because you have um, from up to minus to plus 12 volts, so this would be a range of 24 volts. And um, so, so if you're into building um, stuff like this, uh, make sure you, you are above this. So 35 volts or more is, I think this is a good value to use. Um, sometimes what you see in my um, in my schematics, I use um, like short forms, like um, for example, four N seven or two P two. So this is the equivalent would be four point seven nanofarad or two point two picofarad or two. Um, U2 would be 2.2 microfarad. Uh, so this is something I use um, uh, in my schematics, for example. Um, so uh, this is because it's not that easy overlooked. The dot here, this is easy overlooked. And uh, I actually I use this notation a, uh, a lot here. So those are film capacitors. So they also come uh, in different uh, packages um, and so film capacitors as well general they also come uh, dif with different properties here um, and stuff like that um, uh, so I picked them out here because they're all different here actually um, so here on it is 1000 slash um, 63 so this would mean this is uh, 1000 uh, picofarad so this is one nanofarad and uh, it's up to 63 volts. Um, and also on the other side here is a 2.5. So this means uh, the tolerance uh, is 2.5%. Uh, um, so, um, so, and this also here is also different. Um, so here's a dot for seven. So this would be uh, in, in, in microfarads. Um, so this is 400. 70 nanofarads, um, also um, 63 volts, and the tolerance here is uh, 5%. And uh, this one is, uh, is a bigger one here, this is also different, so this is 2U2, so this is what I had before, so this is 2.2 uh, micro microfarads. Um, so they all, this is all very different, so this is something yeah, you basically uh, need to know um, to figure this out. Um, in the beginning, what you can also can do is, um, if you have a multimeter, which is uh, capable of uh, measuring um, capacitance, so this is also an option if you're, if you're not quite sure uh, what the markings here mean. So maybe a bit more to applications here. Um, we had this before here, um, this electrolytic capacitor here, for example, is to block a DC output. So this here is the signal which is coming in here is from uh, 0 to 10 volts and usually from uh, audio signal, we want to have it um, uh, centered around zero volts, so this here would block uh, the DC offset. So this would be an example here. Um, so here's the zero to 10 volts, and this will move this down here by this offset here, for example. Maybe another look on different packages here. So um, this is what we had before here. So this is um, also ceramic capacitors here. In, in different pitches uh, and sizes. Um, here, this is all ceramic capacitors, um, so this looks very much alike. Um, so this would be here electrolytic capacitors again. So they also come in all different sizes here, as you can see. Um, so this is very much depending um, on the capacitance and and the voltage 
it is uh, capable of. Um, so this would be also here um, film capacitors. So this is also something um, which you see very often these these screen film capacitors here. Um, so this is also something you can use. Um, also here you have these um, the annotation which we saw um, on the ceramic capacitors. So this is uh, very confusing, I must say. So that um, this is not really standardized. Um, so this is very much different uh, on the packages. Um, here's small film capacitors. So this would be 33 nanofarads um, and 2.5% um, tolerance. And um, so here it is dot zero 33 and 463 volts. So you can see um, this is something you need to get a bit you used to in, in the end. Yeah, this would be 22 here. Um, so here it is uh, on the top. Um, it's yes, it says just 22 nanofarads. So this is uh, it's all over the place and uh, it's very much different. But I think the, what I use in my kits. Um, so this is basically what I showed you. So electrolytic is, I guess, the easiest. And um, yeah, I think the film capacitors, so this is a bit all over the place. And I think um, this is what also make it, makes it hard in, in terms of uh, component sourcing um, for, for capacitors, um, these different naming schemes. Um, I think what is helpful is, is um, to get used um, to the, the packages. Um, so if you start, would like to start building um, your own modules and would like to pile up um, some stock of different components because it's much cheaper uh, to buy, buy more components than just a few. Um, so then basically for this here, you need to know the pitch basically for the components. And what I do is usually I, I go either by, by some brands or, or by pitch, actually, because I, I try to use the same pitch for uh, the same type um, of, of capacitor all over and over again uh, in all my builds. Um, so and this is also helpful in building up a stock of components. So yeah, I hope this was a bit helpful. Um, and next time maybe I'll look either into resistors or into integrated circuits and the package itself. Let's see. All right. I just added here, um, so there are more types of capacitors. Um, I tend not to use them, especially not in my kits. So I try to um, keep it special. So this um, is why I'm not covering those here. But um, yeah. Also there, I think with the naming schemes I showed you, this will also work, um, but also there it's uh, basically all over the place. Yeah, just to add that. And maybe an, another note, um, a bit of a distinction of the three capacitor types uh, I showed you. Um, so, so electrolytic capacitors um, are usually are used um, for filtering and if you uh, uh, lead, need a lot of charge, a lot of capacity, so then usually um, electrolytic capacitors are used and they're also the most um, cheap ones, but um, they also have their limitation because uh, of the polarization here. Um, um, then you have um, the, the ceramic ones. Um, yeah, so usually the tolerance is quite big. Uh, on those, um, so I use them uh, as a bypass capacitor. This would be an example here. Also, it can also be used in filters and for other applications. Um, and usually, um, the, the the film capacitors um, I use when they are somewhere in the in the audio pass. Um, for example, um, this is here the oscillator. And um, so this, this is when the frequency here changes uh, quite a lot. And um, then I tend to use these uh, 
film capacitors. So this is just very roughly to give you an idea of the different applications. Um, so yeah, all right. All right, that's all for today. So if you're into building your own synthesizer, make sure to check out my online store. I offer a set of different DIY kits and PCBs in UREC format to get you started. All right, thanks for watching. See you next time and bye for now.